Mahalo. And hello. Thank you so much for joining me today on this momentous occasion. Granted, it happened a few days ago, but you can now legally smoke the Green Goblin in Germany. Or at least, I think you can smoke it. You can carry some amount of it. I don't know if you can sell... Can you sell it in, a, in like, stores now? Is it, like, regulated where... You know, a lot of states over here have legalized marijuana, and it's a whole different spectrum of things, you know? Some states it's just medical. Some states it's decriminalized. Some states they sell it. I, I don't know exactly the difference, you know, as far as Germany. I don't know the specifics, I should say. So, I'm curious to learn about it. I mean, wow. How many of you have been smoking the Green Goblin today, right before this video? All right, let's watch. Oh, by the way, the video is from a small and up-and-coming YouTube channel, the BBC News. Check them out, link down below. To Germany next, and from today, people there can legally smoke cannabis in public. Hundreds of people filled... Okay, they can smoke it in public. That's already right there. That's kind of interesting. Okay. So you, you can carry it. You can smoke it in public. Berlin's Brandenburg Gate at midnight for a smoke-in as the new <laughs> law they came are. into effect. The part decriminalization follows decades of contentious debate in Germany. <laughs> the rules around medical marijuana are also being relaxed. Our Berlin correspondent Jessica Parker reports now from the city of Dresden. It's out in the open. Adults in Germany can now possess up to 25 grams of cannabis in public. Now, what is an adult? 18 and older, I guess. Enough to make dozens of joints and grow up to three plants at home. Oh, yeah, that's a really interesting aspect to it. You can grow your own plants. I think that's, you know, that's kind of like a green, no pun intended, but a green way of doing it. You know what I mean? No need to make like a factory, you can grow your own plant. It's like growing your own vegetables in the backyard. While people like Marcel are planning newly permitted cannabis social clubs, not for tourists though, just German residents. Um, everyone, um, from well, that's some bull crap. They won't let me into the social club? That's interesting, the social club. I know clubs are big there in Germany. Is there a distinction between that and is there like a legal reason, you know? Oh, this is a club, you know, we don't sell it, we just smoke it here. Is that the idea? Where do you buy it? Cannabis, um, which um, goes from the Cannabis Social Club, is one gram that's not on the, on the black market. What do you say to people who say, look, cannabis is addictive and it is harmful, especially to young people? I've actually n almost never heard anyone say it's addictive which is sort of an interesting thing. I mean, obviously it can be a habit forming thing, but I, as far as I've ever heard, chemically it's not addictive. But you know, neither is Fortnite and I know plenty of people addicted to that. <laughs> Everything have dark sides and you have to know about the dark sides and only when it's not illegal, you can free talk about these dark sides. <laughs> These cannabis clubs in cities like Dresden won't pop up overnight and come with their own rules, exacerbating fears that demand will quickly outstrip legal supply. We assume that the black market will be strengthened, particularly strengthened at the beginning in the chaos phase, when demand will be great because of the signal this law sends. The black market and criminal networks will adapt and they will also infiltrate the social clubs. Oh my goodness. Oh, he made it seem really scary. Into the highly secure halls of a medical cannabis grower, who are also seeing some deregulation. Cannabis will not be a narcotic anymore in Germany. It will be just as any other pharmaceutical product, which makes it much more easier for patients to get it from a doctor and to get it from the pharmacy. They keep this room at around 23 degrees, but it's also really quite humid. Wow. Now, there are 650-ish plants in this room, and they are almost ready to be harvested. And the psychoactive substance is... 
the benefits of medical cannabis are debated, while the relaxation around recreational use has been contentious. This is an argument in Germany that likely hasn't yet reached full maturity. Jessica Parker, BBC News in Dresden. Well, I've been getting more reaction to this story from Steve Rolls. He's a senior policy analyst at Transform Drugs Foundation. That's a charity that works to create what it says is a just and effective system of legal regulation for all drugs. He told me what he thought of this move. By all drugs, wow. By Germany. I think it's very significant. Um, I mean, a number of countries in Europe have been making this move. Germany's not the first. Malta actually changed its law in 2021. Luxembourg changed their laws in 2022. Um, we've also seen famously sort of historic reforms in, in the Netherlands and Switzerland. And it's kind of interesting how this is all coinciding, you know, like the legalization of this. It's kind of on the same time span or time frame as America legalizing it. Like the whole world is just very connected these days, huh? Czech Republic are also doing it. I'm not saying that America like set the trend. That's not at all what I'm saying, by the way. Um, I'm just saying it's interesting how the whole world is kind of moving together on this issue. So um, Germany's actually at the part of a wave of reforms that are sweeping across Europe. But I think perhaps it's the most politically significant, just really because of the, its political significance within uh, the European Union and within the world. So when Germany does something, I think people are going to take notice. You know, it's 100 times bigger in population terms than either Luxembourg or Malta. And it's very hard to ignore. They're, they're a serious actor within Europe and they're a serious player on the global stage. So it's, it's a very big deal. And, and I'm sure that the uh, impacts of this are going to ripple around Europe and the world. So do you think there will be... I don't know um, the legalization status of marijuana in other countries, you know? I don't know. I need to see, like, a map of that. Hold on. I'm having trouble finding a map that's, like, for sure up to date. Like, obviously, this one is not up to date with Germany, but, um, okay. So it's not legal anywhere in Europe, at least when this map was made. But it's decriminalized, mo mostly in this region. Okay, Germany kind of fits right into that region. And then Spain and Portugal. But it's still completely illegal in the UK. Got it, got it, got it. Let me see. Be more countries looking to Germany and perhaps legalizing uh, cannabis going forward. Yes, I mean, undoubtedly, we're seeing, we're seeing, you know, 10 years ago, nowhere in the world had actually formally legalized and regulated adult use uh, recreational cannabis. And today there's 45. Or Isn't that kind of crazy? This all happened pretty quick, you know. And for such a relatively innocuous plant, you know, like, I mean, I'd say it's comparable to alcohol. But for whatever reason, this... This really was demonized for a long time. Also jurisdictions around the world and more than half a billion people are living in jurisdictions um, that are in the process of or have already implemented legal access to uh, recreational cannabis. So clearly there's um, a, a trend here. There's a, a growing movement. And I think Germany just represents um, growing momentum in that direction. I think other countries are going to look at the look at what happens in Germany and other countries, see that um, whilst it may not be ideal, it's certainly better than the obvious failings of prohibition and the war on drugs. And they're going to be thinking, well, we should be considering. Interesting. He says the word, you know, the war on drugs. I think of that. That was a, a very American thing. The war on drugs. Um, I didn't know that same term was used over there in Europe. Makes sense. I guess we've all been going along this kind of storyline as far as the war on drugs and the legalization of cannabis all, all, all together.
this. You know, we may not like the fact that people use cannabis, but they do. Um, and we have a choice. We can either leave the, that market in the hands of uh, organised crime groups and unregulated dealers, or we can try and regulate it within the within the ambit of the state and try and re reduce the harms that cannabis can cause to uh, individual users and to the wider community. Can Germany have been very clear that it's a public health measure and a community safety measure? Yes, although some doctors there... Yeah, I think it makes... I think it makes sense just from that standpoint, pretty much, produce the black market. You know, obviously, prohibition didn't work. At least not over here in America. I mean, if you wanted it, you could get it. Pretty much that simple. Amazingly prolific over here in America, even during the height of the war on drugs. So, it's, it's better off. I, I think it's better off just being through legal avenues. Very similar to prohibition on alcohol. We're all saying that the liberalization is actually going to fuel drug use. Well, I mean, that hasn't really been the experience in countries uh, that have made this move already. There, there's been uh, reforms of different natures. It's quite difficult to generalize because different countries have taken very different approaches. But um, in, in Canada, for example, uh, you know, use has gone up marginally, but not, interestingly, amongst youth, which is, uh, you know, wh where a lot of the concerns are focused. But of course, use has been rising for decades. Use of cannabis has been rising for decades under prohibition, under the war on drugs. So, you know, there's not really any evidence that, that, that uh, an enforcement, a punitive enforcement approach can somehow eradicate drug use or eradicate markets. So this is a pragmatic. I mean, of course, decriminalizing it is probably going to increase use to some extent. That's just common sense. But like he said, at least over here in America, I would say the significant majority of people used it at some point. Um, so it was already heavily used position that deals with reality that there is demand for these drugs and if it's not met through some legally regulated responsible government system it will be met anyway through um, an, an illegal market controlled by organized crime groups so you, you might want to look at it as a least worst option but um, it's a pragmatic one and more and more governments are going down that road and it's a it's a pro-freedom um, approach which is usually pretty a good thing you know let the adults decide what they want to do, especially if it's not hurting anybody else. Cool. Thank you, BBC. And thank you for watching. Um, hey, if you're a fan of the, of the green stuff, congratulations. If you're not, um, my apologies. <laughs> but regardless, very interesting. We'll see how it plays out. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching.